Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we are returning to the early solar system model that we created uh, last week and what I'm going to try and do today is turn it into the present day solar system using a few sort of theories of what happened and bits and bobs like that so yeah please keep in mind this isn't accurate this is just a test just a bit of fun and we're not historically accurate here i mean we're just going off by possible theories and bits and bobs obviously we're never going to know the true truth of um, probably how it all happened but yeah we're going to have a little attempt at trying to make uh, the present day solar system from our early model we made here so first thing um a lot of you guys mentioned in the uh, previous video um i didn't actually didn't know this originally but apparently neptune actually was closer to the sun than uranus at one point so what we're going to do just to uh, change our model up, we're just going to lower Uranus and Neptune, uh, or we're going to swap them around. So Neptune is currently at 20 um, AU, and Uranus is currently at 15. So we're going to put Uranus to 20. Now that orbit slightly changed, and we're going to put this down to about 15. So that's now going to be in Uranus's orbit, and then Uranus is now going to be in Neptune's orbit. So we're just going to... Why is it so... Oh, it's eccentric. There we go. So we'll just uh, fix it a little bit. So let's just lower that down, and then put this back out to 20 AU. So... Oh! No, it still doesn't. It still has that eccentric. Oi, stop doing that. So let's put it just straight to zero. Right, and then yeah, we'll just we'll just increase it manually. So, okay, so that's roughly Uranus and Neptune swapped around now. So that's possibly how the solar system would have looked in this case then. So Neptune is where Uranus was. Um, and now we're going to try and evolve this further on. So I'm just going to make regular saves to this. So we don't have to keep... If we anything goes wrong, we don't have to... Uh, so I'm just going to call it uh, 1.0 for the time being. So we'll just do that. Right, so that's save with Uranus and Neptune now swap around. So, first things first. One thing a lot of people said as well is, where, where was the planet that hit Uranus? Now, in theory, in the time zone I tried to set this in, Uranus had already been hit by that possible super-Earth. But, but, but for fun, we are going to smash the super-Earth, the possible super-Earth planet, into Uranus. And we're going to see um, Uranus get pr pr hit pretty hard by this thing. So I don't think... I don't think there's any name for this possible object that could have smashed into Uranus, but apparently it was a super Earth or some sort of fairly large rocky object. Maybe it was another gas giant, who knows, but it smacked into the side of Uranus and uh, knocked it on its back. So we're going to uh, we're going to try and do a uh, representation of that with this experiment here. So if the object menu would open, that would be much appreciated. Yeah, for some reason, whenever I record, it likes to take its time. But there we go. So let's open this up. Right. So we'll go with a uh, random rocky. Um... That, that should be that should be good enough actually so we're gonna pause it right we're getting a lot of lag today what is all this about right oi behave right so launch right and then we're gonna simply line up our camera oh god this lag is awful right gonna shoot it there okay so there's our rocky planet then we've got uranus here so super earth versus uranus and actually what we need to do with uranus obviously at this point in time, it still hasn't been knocked on its side yet, so we actually need to rotate it back to the way it was. So, we're going to do this, like so. Oh, no, that's... Uh, okay, so that's roughly roughly correct now. So, Super Earth... Well, I say Super Earth, Rocky Planet versus Uranus. Let's see how this plays out. So, Uranus just doing its thing, chilling on its own. We see this other Super Earth is coming in here. So, let's go ahead and speed it up. So I'll slow it down. That is going very fast, right? So slow it down nice and slow. Okay, so Super Earth versus Uranus. Here's a good uh, sort of collision. We'll slow it down. Go on sort of cinematic mode. So here we go. Super Earth, Earthly, rocky planet versus Uranus. So that's going to smack into the side of Uranus in the early solar system. That is a huge collision there. Um, now, I don't know if the game's going to knock it on its side or not, so we may have to do it manually. But let's see how that's done it. So in theory... What should have happened here is Uranus would have been hit so hard it tilted it on its side. So we would have ended up with something like that. So there's a good uh, sort of representation of it. So then that would obviously all cool down. All the material would sort out. It obviously Uranus, maybe its rings would form from this. Who knows? So we'll go ahead and sort of do a little sort of representation. So the rings, are the rings there? I don't know if they got added or not. Oh, no, no, the rings are there. You can see them if you look carefully. So we'll add a second set. So, obviously, it's quite dark out here. Those rings are as dark as charcoal, but they are, they are, or they were there for a second. I don't know if they still are now. I think maybe these particles may have absorbed some of them. No, you can't. No, the rings are there. You definitely can see them. So, we'll go quickly on uh, flashlight mode and let's see, see if we can actually spot the rings. But, yeah, those rings may have been formed from that collision. Maybe they didn't. But, yeah, there, there's, there you go. You can see them now. So, rings are formed. Uranus knocked on its side. Obviously, all that material would eventually sort itself out. So, if we just speed up time, 
there you go. So that that would in theory set up the sort of present day Uranus with its uh, tilted on its side, got its rings going on there. So we'll just go ahead and remove those there so we can run it. So that's Uranus's sort of little uh, incident that maybe uh, turned it to the way it is now. So next up, what we're going to do is, as we did from our previous experiments, the fifth gas giant, that gets ejected completely. So we're just going to imagine that got tossed out. So we're just going to toss it over here for now. We'll, sort, we'll come back to that a little later. And also, as that got tossed out, maybe, maybe not, but maybe some of the dwarf planets got a little more eccentric, for instance. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to sort of increase the orbits a bit and sort of see try and create sort of a uh, fairly accurate sort of representation of the, how the uh, orbits are today. So, again, since the planet or the fifth planet gas giant got knocked out, it in theory creates stuff like this. So we can see Sedna's orbit, for instance, that's now slightly changed. So let's uh, increase that a little more. But there we go. So Sedna, something like that. Obviously, we have the goblin object over here. I'm not sure if this one even stood it still. I don't even know if we know this exists at this point. But we'll give that sort of its sort of normal sort of sized orbit. So there's a rough estimate. But then we'll just keep uh, keep uh, just sort of inclining all the rockies. So since that Planet 9 presence or pla fifth gas giant, whatever you want to call it, since that object got ejected, it probably did upset some of our dwarf planets chilling in the further areas of the Kuiper Belt. So again, just rough estimates here. This is obviously not accurate whatsoever. Just a little prediction, little fun little test. So again, we'll just do it with that one. Oh, oh, I don't know what happened there, but that one actually just got destroyed. Oh, never mind. So there we go. So we can sort of see form in the sort of more modern way and obviously fifth gas giant maybe it survived as planet nine maybe it didn't i mean we can try giving it a uh, auto orbit so we'll just leave planet nine as something like that for the time being i mean we don't have to make it too sort of accurate but yeah that that got ejected so we don't obviously need to do anything there anymore and obviously we'll quickly uh, lower this a bit but yeah just a just a rough estimate of a making a possible planet nine sort of orbit come out so maybe it got tossed out maybe it somehow managed to hang on to the sun's uh, gravitation uh, so Something like that. There we go. That's just a rough sort of estimate of that as well. I think Sedna slightly needs to be more... Sedna may need to be slightly more eccentric, but there we go. So there's a rough estimate there. Okay, so then we've got all the other objects sort of chilling in the Kuiper Belt normally. Obviously Pluto, and we still have Triton, so we need to get onto Triton. So next up, we have the... Uh, the migration of neptune so this is where for some reason don't know why maybe the fifth gas giant has something to do with it but we did see it in our experiment where neptune did get further away from the sun neptune now needs to move obviously to about 20 30 au so something like this um, we're going to auto orbit just to reset it so you're going to work okay auto orbit okay that's fine uh, and then you need to be around 30 au so let's keep increasing it so it should be around there okay so now we can sort of see Triton is now in the same orbit as Neptune, so you can sort of see what we're working towards here. So then Uranus, how are you doing? So 97 years. I think Uranus maybe need to be a little tad closer to the sun, so we're just going to fix it a little more where it is. And then obviously Saturn, you'd need to be further out. So you should be around, I think you should be around 50 years. Is it Saturn's orbit usually around 50 years? So we'll just a uh, little increase in Saturn. So something like that. 9 AU, I think that's roughly right. So I don't know off the top of my head. Jupiter's already in the correct spot. So now we've sort of the gas giants have sort of got closer to their present day positions. So now Neptune, obviously Neptune's now in the Kuiper belt, the uh, inner areas of the Kuiper belt. So if we move Neptune around, so in theory, Neptune is going to have a close encounter. So we can already see it's already stolen it, but Triton is going to have a close encounter with Neptune. So well, can we see Neptune anywhere? Neptune? No? So Neptune's over there. So Triton has been picked up by Neptune in its orbit. So now we can see this is going to happen. So if we speed up time a bit more, so Neptune has grabbed onto Triton's orbit. See, we can see Triton is already struggling um, and it's already been yeah, attracted by Neptune. So we're now going to sort of... Uh, let. Oh, what's going on there? So what we'll do, we'll do it manually actually, but Neptune is going to catch onto Triton. So we'll manually lower Triton down. So here we are. Okay, still a little too far away from uh, the mighty Neptune. So we'll move it a little closer. Maybe something like that. And then we're going to go auto orbit. Obviously, this is a retrograde orbit, so it will be going around Neptune in the incorrect direction. But what we can do, we should be able to, if we just completely flip it around, so that should be retrograde now. So that should be going around the incorrect direction. So let's just slow it down. So there we go. So there's a rough sort of representation of Neptune as a uh, captured Triton. So now we can see Triton's going around Neptune there, stolen it. So, and then we'll see triton is slightly uh it's not a perfect orbit is it so triton does need to be slightly inclined maybe a little bit eccentric as well so let's just uh let that go out a bit so something like that so neptune has caught triton from the kuiper belt 
to form this. So now if we look, go back, we'll go back to realistic mode actually. So see how dark it actually is out here. Obviously turn all that off. So Neptune just pushed out for who knows what reason into the Kuiper Belt. It came across Triton, the largest object in the Kuiper Belt. And yeah, now Triton is uh, part of that orbit around Neptune. So we can see it's got its retrograde orbit going on there. I believe I've made it go the correct way. So Triton now in orbit of the uh, mighty fine Neptune, as we can see. So well, where, where is he? There you go. So yeah, and that will now orbit around Neptune till the present day and then obviously into the future. So looking good. So Triton and Neptune, they've all sorted themselves out. So as far as I know, that is sort of the outer solar system sort of set up for the present day. Obviously, the dwarf planet orbits are not correct, but there's just a rough example of they got pushed out. Planet 9, fifth gas giant, that may have been able to survive and hang on out there. Who knows? But yeah, we go. So the outer, the outer solar system, fairly, I, I think we can all agree, fairly sort of accurate, and I didn't want to press that. That's, that's the second time I've done that now. All right, everyone, I'm now back. I had to uh, rebuild the simulation a bit because I clicked the uh, new simulation button again instead of the save button, which is very, very annoying. So yeah, I just have to rebuild it. Obviously, I've um, added Triton. Triton's back to Neptune again in its retrograde orbit. I've put Triton and Uranus back where right where they should be. Also, I've given the dwarf planets their eccentric sort of looks again since the uh, fifth gas giant got tossed out. So that would have upset the orbits a bit. So now we're going to head inwards. The outer solar system, like I said, is fairly fairly done now so we're gonna head inwards so as we can see in the solar system Theia is still here and also if we're trying to make it to the present day Theia needs to go so we are gonna have the earth versus Theia collision so what we're gonna do is we're gonna manually bring them together otherwise we'll be running this simulation literally forever trying to get them to come together naturally so we're gonna move Theia obviously fairly close to the earth here and also we need to uh, let them glide so we need to get them pretty much in the perfect spot to uh start this collision so maybe there okay so we'll move it a little further on in its orbit but yeah those two are going to have to come together so we'll see how this works so how are we doing here obviously i don't want any of these things locked for this collision otherwise it could mess up the sizes and stuff of the objects is earth all right nothing locked there that's got calculated radius on uh, i think i will just switch that off so and we'll unlock all of those so the features won't do any weird uh, bugs or anything so right we're gonna uh obviously yeah bring them together so Theia versus Earth. So they've got two close together in their orbits. There's only enough room for one planet here. So we are going to uh, we're gonna see what happens. So obviously we're going to slow down time. We're going a little too quick. Play. Okay, so let's see how... So are they... How are we doing? We don't want Theia orbiting Earth. So we need to just make them get in that perfect, perfect spot. Maybe if we put Theia this side of Earth, maybe that will help. No? Come on, Theia. You know you want to go into Earth. Come on. Oh, God. I don't want to do that. Whoa. That's going a little too quickly. Right. Stop heading that way, Faye. You need to go into the Earth. Okay. God, that is close. Right, we'll just put it here. Then that should be able to sort of force a collision with Earth together here. So we'll turn that off. Click play. Is that gonna? Is that gonna smash into it? Come on. You need to go into the Earth, not around it. Come on. Right. Slow it down. Right. Here we go. Right. That's looking good. So we'll slow it nicely down. So Faye versus Earth. So we'll lock onto the Earth for this. So. Yep, they got too close in their orbits together. There's only enough room for one planet in this section. So we're going to see the early Earth versus the Theia object. So let's let them go together. Traveling at a few minutes a second here. So we'll have a real nice sort of slow collision for you guys to see here. So let's let them go into each other. Come on a little closer, Theia. Come on, you know you want to. Come on, get in there. Just a tad more. Come on, 25 seconds. It's going to go in. Any second now. Okay, so they're about to collide. I mean, that's into the Earth's atmosphere now, so we can see it's, yeah, it's made its collision on the early Earth. So we're going to see Faya as it gets completely annihilated by the Earth. So, oh yes, that's a huge, huge collision. Oh, dearie me. So that's obviously going to completely reset the Earth's surface there. And yeah, that is a, that's a pretty big disaster. If we look on the Earth here, we can see that is a huge, huge area that has just been lit up here. Um, can we go to the surface view and see? Yeah, there you go. 20,000 degrees plus collision. The Theia has been destroyed. So all that's left is the Earth. So now we can see all this material popping out here. So in theory, we will go with the theory at that form, the moon. So we'll spawn, an, we'll spawn an early moon in here. And we'll just basically have it in orbit of Earth. So yeah, all that material, it came together and it would have formed this moon at some point. So we're just going to put the moon there for now. So... Yeah, that was possibly formed from the collision. So how are we doing? So all that material, obviously, it all sprayed out. Some of it may have come together to form the moon. We can see the moon may actually um, 
take some of this material, which would be quite cool, actually. But there we go. So we can see the earlier. Obviously, that is a huge, huge collision. Obviously, the, that thing is going to skyrocket in temperature for the time being. With all that material come back in. We can see the moon. Obviously, from the collision, this thing would have been ridiculously hot in temperature as well so probably just put it up to under 5,000 degrees so the moon and the earth are now forming after the fair collision and this is obviously what we're going to end up with once they all cool down so there we go earth and moon so they're going to sort themselves out so let's see how we're doing how's the moon okay so good stuff obviously the moon's going to need to be a little further out than it is at the moment so i mean it should take about a month so about 30 days roughly so Obviously, needs to be a little further out. What? What? We'll just put it down to about a month ish. Something, something like that. There we go. So it's not completely accurate, but there's a rough row representation. So the Earth and Moon have formed. The Moon's still losing material for some reason. <laughs> Obviously, we made it a little too hot. I think Earth's still cooling down after its huge collision with Theia. So we're gonna let it let it cool down. See what we end up with. So Earth and Earth and the Moon. Come on, I'm gonna cool down. So Earth's obviously yeah, Earth settled now, and I'll see the Moon should have uh, the Moon should have settled now. So there we go, Moon. Nicely freshly settled there. It looks a little different to it did originally. I think the surface texture got reset because we made it so hot. So Earth and Moon. So there's a rough sort of representation of uh, the possible Faya scenario. And obviously Earth doesn't look uh, doesn't look like it does before. So obviously that's obviously going to cool back down, and eventually its continents will drift into the present day. So how are we doing here? And obviously what we need to do as well is it needs to be one mass of Earth for some reason. It's annoying when it changes it by itself. Um, and then down here we need to put it back to one year because it's going to be. No, orbital period, oh, one year, come on. Why, why are you not doing one year? We'll have to do this then. We'll, we'll add that moon back ourselves. So, 11 months. Okay, one year, thank you. Right, and then the moon. Obviously, we need to drag you uh, back towards the Earth. So, can we all to orbit, please? Right, there we go. Thank you very much. Right, so there we go. Uh, six months, obviously, put it down to a... I don't know why it's not letting us manually enter them, so we'll just do it. Put it back to about a month. There you go, sir. 30 days, roughly. So, Earth and Moon settled up to where they should be now. So, obviously, with the Earth, we need to give you... And Earth's now tilted. Earth has tilted now, which is uh, which is quite cool. So, that's kind of played off um, pretty well there. So, the Earth slightly tilted like it is nowadays. So, obviously, not completely the same. But, yeah, there's a rough representation of it. Maybe that collision did tilt Earth like Uranus got tilted earlier on in the video. So, that's all fine. Uh, surface... Uh, atmosphere, we're just going to pull it to one atmosphere pressure now. So its atmosphere actually disappeared from that. So one ATM, not one PA. No, we want one ATM. Thank you. So one ATM. There you go. So Earth will now eventually, continental drift will turn that into the present day Earth. So we'll get back to that shortly. So Earth and Moon, they've settled in their one AU distance from the sun. So now onto the sun itself. We're going to throw a save in this time, and I'm going to make sure to press the save button. So we'll put that as a, we'll pull it to 3.0. So we're making slight adjustments to it as we get closer to the present day. So that's all done. Let it save. Right now, we're going to do Control D, get rid of any fragments still flying around. So the sun itself, and also we're going to be heading to Venus first. Venus is the big one we want to be seeing here. So currently, Venus has still got its water on. It's still the early days of Venus. Its atmosphere slightly hazy, coloured, little patches of water, but now. As we uh, travel a big distance into the future, the sun, obviously, if we look at the sun at the moment, 0 0.7. So this is going to need to go back to 1. So 1 AU like it normally is. So now the sun has got its normal sort of, yeah, normal sort of habitable zone. So if we actually just undo that again, so 0 0.7. So we can see, if we look at the size of the zone, so this is 0 0.7. And if we pull it back to 1, enter. You can see the area got a little bigger there. So now Venus isn't in that Goldilocks zone anymore. It's now too close to the sun to support its water. So if we click play, over a long period of time, obviously we're going to need to speed it up. But Venus is, uh, that water's not going to last. So let's just let it speed up. Let Venus do its thing. So obviously that temperature is just going to get hotter and hotter and hotter. So eventually we'll do it manually as well, but we'll slow it. We'll just slow down time. The water's all going to evaporate. We're now at 300 degrees. Water says bye-bye. So that's all evaporated. And obviously, Venus's atmosphere. This is where Venus's atmosphere is going to start to build up. So where are we? So atmosphere pressure. Venus should normally... What's Venus normally? I think it's about... Is it 50 or 91? Let's just place the current day Venus. So there's Venus. So Venus should be... So surface... I think it's 90... Is it 90-ish? 91. Okay, so 91.3. So click play. Now... This atmosphere, go to surface all the way down here. So the albedo is already fine, but uh, the atmosphere, right. So we'll go back to ATM, slow down time. 
Now, this is going to obviously, as the water evaporates, the atmosphere is getting thicker. We're going to slowly increase that. And you can see the atmosphere is getting thicker as well. So the surface is now going to be hidden under Venus's steamy clouds forever. So we can see it starts off like that. Water evaporates. It starts to build up atmosphere pressure. The surface gets hidden forever. And also, if we times it all the way up to how it should be, so that's a little too high. Jeez. Right, so 93, 92, 91. So now Venus, present-day Venus, obviously... One thing we need to do as well, atmosphere colour. That's going to go to its normal sort of recognisable sort of hazy, sandy sort of orangey colour like that. And obviously underneath the surface, oh, oh, that does look a lot more menacing already. Right, so under the surface, obviously, it's eventually going to turn to its present day sort of appearance. So the surface is going to get fried, the water's all evaporated. But obviously the volcanic activity on the surface is going to make that. Put the atmosphere and clouds back on. And they're all not city lights. And then job done. There's your present day Venus. So that's obviously going to warm up 300 degrees. That'll probably go into its normal sort of temperatures. So that'll warm up. But there you go. So there's Venus. And obviously what we need to do as well. Uh, trail colour needs to go back to its sort of normal recognisable colour. So Venus warmed up back to its present day. So we've sort of evolved Venus with the sun increasing. So there we go. And then obviously Mercury and Venus are really fine. So that's good. Right now on to Mars. Remember Mars still had its water but obviously the water for some reason vanished on mars maybe it the mars couldn't hold on to its atmosphere but the water on mars for some reason vanished so we're gonna make it vanish like that so mars is now looking a little more similar to its present day sort of situation obviously the uh possible bluish atmosphere it may have had at one point obviously that's gonna fade back to its normal um mars like sort of deserty sort of orangey atmosphere so we're gonna do that and then also the surface colours. Now Mars has been around for a long period of time. It's going to eventually end up like it is today. So the water's all evaporated. It's a very dusty, deserty, cold world now. So there's our Mars uh, surface. I don't think we changed anything on the atmosphere before, did we? So obviously the atmosphere pressure is not enough to hold on to any sort of water or any sort of temperature. So Mars is now very, very cold. So if we just, um, oh, just check it up with the uh, present day Mars. So there we are. Looks like Mars is a little smaller than it should be as well. So, oh, no, no, never mind. No, it's, it's the same size. So, what we need to check as well. So, what is Mars's normal atmosphere? So, atmosphere of Mars. So, in ATM, that is, yes, it was tiny, actually, right. Uh, BAR, no. Uh, so, 0 0.646 kPa. So, we'll go ahead down here and then enter in the correct value. So, where are we? Atmosphere. Wait, where's this atmosphere there? Right, um, right so it was... That's quite annoying, right? Oi, right back down. 6.46 MBAR, okay. So 6.46, remember that. Right. 6.46, excellent. Okay, oh, that's changed Mars's appearance slightly. So there we go. Right, so that's Mars in the present day now. So we've given it the correct atmosphere properties. So that's um, all fine now, excellent. Right, so, yeah, MBR. Obviously, the atmosphere, for some reason, isn't even showing up now. Is it because we still have water on it? No, the water's gone. Okay, so that's um, built our present-day Mars. Not sure why the atmosphere's not showing, but there you go. So that's Mars built to its present-day. Obviously, the trail color would obviously need to go to its normal sort of a recognizable Marsy red. So there you go. And obviously, Earth, eventually with you, your continents will eventually evolve into how we know them today. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go for a refresh replace object. Earth's continents will evolve all the way through the dinosaur era into the human sort of here recorded history, and eventually we get that. So, continental drift. Obviously, the moon's already in orbit, and there you go. So, if we look at the solar system now, it looks like the generic solar system you get when you launch the game, right? Obviously, the sun, it's not the young sun anymore. So, this now takes us to the present day sun. So, yeah, that's now the sun. And now, if we look at the system, I mean, yeah, that looks fairly... I mean, obviously, it's not exactly the same. The orbits are all slightly different to the normal simulation. But there you go. That's the sort of evolution from the past to the present day of the solar system. So Mars, obviously, completely different. If we just get a line up of all the objects, I mean, all the way down here. But obviously, Planet Nine's still in here somewhere. Obviously, we don't know that for sure. But if we look to the rocky planets, Earth, it's got its human civilization now. That's obviously all evolved. The continental drift um, has happened since the Faya collision. So there we go. We've got Earth, Venus, Mars to its current present day form. And then obviously Mercury was already the way it was. So there we are. And also Uranus as well. Don't forget Uranus tilted on its side now, tilted over on its back. And Neptune 
is now uh, the proud owner of a new moon. So if we look all the way down here, remember Triton was captured by Neptune as Neptune migrated outwards. So yeah, Triton, orbit of a uh, good old Neptune over there. So there we go, guys. That is my sort of take on the solar system's evolution from the previous video to the present day. So if I missed anything, let me know down below in the comments. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the way that's turned out. I think I've given a quite a good sort of representation there. Um, obviously, if I miss anything, let me know. But yeah, all the objects looking good there and all evolved to their present day forms. i got to say, the way Venus evolved to its present day, I think that was really cool, where I increased the atmosphere. Obviously, it got thicker, the temperature increased, the surface colour. I also put back to the normal Venus appearance. I think that was really cool, how Venus evolved from the past to the present. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Any, like I said, anything I missed, let me know down below. And yeah, if you like this video, make sure to press that like button, subscribe for more, help us on the journey to 20,000 subscribers as we are less than 100 people, less than 100 subscribers away from the big 20,000 now. So yeah, massive thank you for everyone for helping us get there. I mean, that is absolutely amazing. So yeah, it means the world, guys. Really, really appreciate it. And yeah, with that all said and done, let's see if we can go for 60 likes on today's video of evolving the past to the present. And stay tuned for the future. We're going to move to the future in the next episode of this so there you go guys look forward to that one but with yeah like i said with that all said and done make sure you guys all stay safe out there have a great day and i'll see you in the next video goodbye